Welcome to the chateau. This 17th century Renaissance chateau has four stories, a chapel, four master bedrooms, a medieval dungeon, and original hand-painted artworks. We're so excited to give you the tour. The reason I want to start with this side is because you can really see the difference between the structures and the different time periods that they were built. You can see where the dungeon stones meet the brick facade of the chateau. The back side of the chateau is original. It's never been repainted. So the red bricks have faded. The stone dungeon base and moat once had a medieval fortress on top of it, but that eventually crumbled. That was all built in 1508. And then you have the Renaissance Chateau that was built later in the style of the 16th century. But we have some professors from l'Ecole du Louvre, so that's the School of the Louvre in Paris, who will be coming by um, to teach their students about the architecture of the building and looking at some of the paintings above the fireplaces. But let's go back inside. Oh, also totally forgot to mention that another reason I love coming out here is because there's often wild animals in the prairie in the back. We've seen foxes and deer and boar and eagles, and you just never know what you're gonna find when you come out here. So it's the beginning of the wedding season and you're super lucky because they are already set up for tomorrow's wedding. This room is called the Medici Room because there's a strong link between the Medici family and the chateau. I would say that my favorite part about working with weddings here is that every couple has a new flavor to add to the chateau. It's a new personality, a new history, and new stories. This painting is original to the chateau and is one of three created by Quentin Varin. And each painting tells a part of a story. So this room actually used to be two rooms. You can see that there's a wooden border in the middle. My grandfather had this wall broken so that we could make this room big enough to host up to 150 people seated for dinner. Otherwise it's 300 standing. Chateaus are typically made up of a bunch of really small rooms um, and each room had their own chimney and you can actually see here that this in the ceiling that's where the chimney used to come down. This ceiling has never been repainted that we know of so it's all what we say in French de uh, original. So it may surprise you, but this beam here actually broke and we had to put in a huge metal beam from above and drill it up into the beam to support it. And that was very scary. Um, we realized that the chandelier was just slowly falling down. So we called somebody and <laughs> kind of panicked. <laughs> so next up is the Louis room. Hence, the large portrait of Louis XIII. Everything that was originally in the chateau was stolen when it was occupied in World War II. So we have no original artifacts in the building. These ceilings are also painted, but they seem to have aged a little more. When the weddings are here, this is usually the dance room um, and the dessert room. And then if it's raining, then it'll also be used for the cocktail. This is actually one of the favorite rooms by movie productions because of the wooden walls. A lot of chateaus have remodernized their spaces. They've painted them often white. And so 
that's really what you find all over the place, all over Paris, all over the countryside, are these beautiful wooden walls painted white, but we wanted to keep them authentic. So we continue staining the walls and waxing the floors so they can look original. This is our gray room, or the room that we call Marie de Rohan. Everyone calls it the gray room, though. We can imagine that these chandeliers were once filled with candles instead of light bulbs, and some person went and got the electricity put in, which I am very grateful for. In February, Ian and his brother repainted this whole room and found layers of different paint in the walls. We were all pleasantly surprised when Ian found an old mirror that was painted over, but still perfectly intact. This chimney is one of my favorites in the chateau because of the beautiful marble work that was done on it. Look at these little sunflowers. These terraces are another favorite space of mine. I love the reflections in the water. And the bridge when it's flowered is just wonderful. If I actually lived in the chateau, then I still think that this would be one of my favorite spots. I'd probably have a couch out here and just be here every evening. So this beautiful staircase was added in 1880. It has a beautiful echo. I would really love to put in a chandelier up there, but first of all, I don't know how we will ever get up there, and I don't know if we will ever be able to find a chandelier that is long enough. This is a little bust that I found amongst my grandfather's things. I thought it was pretty cute. It's from 1773 and it's actually signed right down here. My grandfather really likes to go, liked? My grandfather really liked to go to Brocante and get all sorts of things. A Brocante is a French antique market. So out here we have the terrace, or the covered terrace, that leads to the chapel. Real quick. How many keys do you have on that keychain? Oh my gosh, like at least 10. And that's just for the first floor. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah, the rest of the keys are in a bag <laughs> and in a box. I have a bag and a box of keys. <laughs> so this is the chapel. And these are also original ceilings that I absolutely love and hope that I can restore someday because they're starting to fall apart. These stained glass windows um, over here, they were actually done by E. Diderot in 1884. Marie de Médicis came to pray here in this chapel when Léonore Dory was living here um, because she was her best friend and she lived in the chateau for many years with the Count Conchini. So these are little cherubs that don't their love upon anyone who comes across these doors. <laughs> I really love the Greek features that they added with the columns on the sides. And if you come this way, you can see the beautiful terrace that Ian so kindly cleaned for us. At the right time of day, it is one of the most magical areas and it's probably why couples enjoy their photos here so much. They used to put big tapestries up on the walls and there was a really big one here at some point, which is kind of a shame because it brings in so much light. But I can understand it because in the winter it gets very cold in here. So this area is Upstairs, you can tell that it's not kept up in the same way down as downstairs. Literally just got a cobweb in my eye as we walk through that door. Nice. <laughs> but there's this beautiful space in here 
that I really love and it comes out onto this terrace. So I'd really love to turn this into an office so that, you know, we can come and have coffee out on this terrace. Ooh, look, there's a turn. Those are seabirds. Ooh, catch it on the left. Did you catch it? So from here, you can see the dove house and just a little bit of the farmhouse on the left. And then behind these trees, there's the 28 horse stables and the orangerie space. Some rickety old stairs and some peeling wallpaper. Sometimes I love it, sometimes I hate it. <laughs> and this is a tiny room, clearly only for children. I mean, maybe it was just a bedroom. Maybe you just had your bed in here. Um, there is a closet. Tiny closet. There's no bathroom or any sign of pipes. You look super tall right now. Nice. It might be a good idea to make this room into a kid's room. Um, yeah, I don't know, we'll see. So we're on the first floor and can you hear the bells? Oh yeah. So right behind these trees, there's actually a church and the center village. So we're really close to the town. Oh my gosh, and look at this guy. <laughs> Who is that? My grandpa always told me that a lot of cultures put scary figures on the outside to scare off any bad spirits. So that's the one scaring off all the bad spirits and that's why we are not haunted. <laughs> not haunted. <clears throat> All the fireplaces are part of a series that has to do with some mythology. So that fireplace is almost as tall as that tiny room we were just in. Ah. I was told that when the Duc de Lourine lived here, he made this beautiful cast iron piece for the fireplace. And you can tell by the symbology in the artwork. It has the lion. And I think these are two wolves. Yeah, we've got House Stark, and then the Lannisters. My favorite is the dwarf up here with the club. Oh yeah, yeah, we got Gimli. Look at the beautiful design on the side of this. One of the ways that you can tell that this room in particular is used more for films is that the uh, wall is just a fabric that's stapled in. They didn't need to do it all the way to the top because it's out of frame. And so, they didn't. Okay. We're not haunted. This hallway is also a favorite because it's very long with lots of little doors coming out. This one was used in a Louis Vuitton shoot recently. These are, well in French it's tiron. Tiron means to pull, so they're pulleys, I guess. But they are actually attached to the metal beam that goes across the floor. And they're attached to the beam above, pulling it upwards, and attached to the walls, pulling them inwards. That way the chandelier won't fall on our guests. Probably the worst part about it all is that we had to get rid of the beautiful marble bathrooms that we had in here because the weight of them was just too much for the structure to handle. They had been added in the 60s, and nearly 70 years of pressure has created multiple problems. The marble baths were so heavy that they needed a crane to get them outside of the chateau. So this room has a secret door secret passage, so it's pretty great for playing tag and hide and seek. 
Artistic directors love filming in this room because it's so vibrant and it makes for the most intriguing set pieces. This is a third original painting by Pontin Varin. And the artwork is integrated with the structure of the fireplace. They're all painted in place, so there's something that was not hung and couldn't be taken from the chateau. Look at these little monkey faces. They're so cute. Lots of little cherubs. Boop, boop, boop. And this beautiful wall fabric was added for a Vogue photo shoot, which we will talk more about in another video. And this room was probably the mistress's room, and she had a view on the gardens. Which we have not yet brought back to life. Nope, but you can kind of see the fountain that's in the center there. Shall we go upstairs? Another flight of stairs. By American standards, we are on the third floor now. And in French standards, we are on the second. Um, this floor is often used for movies. This has been taverns, kitchens, the servants' quarters, special painting method that they use in, uh, for movie sets called patine. And most of the walls up here have been patined. Yes, this room has two fireplaces because at some point the wall between the two was also taken out. And if we continue down the long hall, we probably come to the first maid's room um, because there's this indent in the wall. It's what they often use for the beds. Artistic directors usually love this space because you really have the ability to do two different environments and have this effect with a wall in between them to kind of peer through from one to the other. And we've seen a lot of different decors in here and I'm just amazed at how different every single one is. Like you wouldn't recognize the space from one movie to another. So it's starting to get a little bit dark, so I don't really want to go up there. But in here, recently we had a TV show come through and paint some gold around the edges. This used to be an old fireplace. And this was a fake fireplace that they painted around. So we're not quite done. There's still an attic above us, but I think we're gonna have to save that for another video and maybe Ian can take a turn and show us the dungeons. So now, let's go check out the medieval dungeon. In this space, we have, very obviously, a lot of old stone. That's a prop, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna eat my words on camera real quick. That, that is not stone at all. So, um, fun fact, not all the stones you hear are made from real stone. One of the first things everybody notices when they come down here is that it's significantly colder. That's because we are below ground and surrounded by a moat. So trapping heat isn't exactly an option down here. Even though this looks like a traditional dungeon where we had our prisoners, um, it was actually just the kitchen. So if you can imagine, they would have had the cooking area here and the witches would boil their potions and stew their frogs right around here. Baby, there were no witches in here. No witches. That's not what history says. We'll talk about that in another video. So, they had the kitchen oven there, and in here, they had 
a bread oven. And you can fit so many cookies in there. Here you can see we still have the windows open right now. And that's because the dungeon needs to breathe. There's a lot of moisture down here and it's so cold. And whenever it's a warm sunny day, we like to heat it up a little bit. Right now we've basically walked across most of the chateau. Now we are coming up underneath the big beautiful staircase room. And this is where we have our chauffage, which is our furnace. Now, this one is not in operation. As far as we know, this is the oldest one in the chateau. Next to it, we have a slightly bigger, a little more modern looking furnace. You know, enough to heat your average huge house. And the new furnace we just put in is the biggest, and so far, it's been doing a pretty good job. So we're pretty happy about it. This little passageway goes all the way through the chateau and looks like something out of a horror movie. So. This is not the only secret passageway on the Chateau Domain. There's another one that runs from our dove house all the way to the church in the center of town. So that was used in World War II and we can only assume this was used in a similar fashion. This staircase actually leads right back up into the big grand staircase room above us. Aside from that, that's about it for the dungeon. Thank you for watching our Chateau tour. In our next video, we'll be taking you around the rest of the domain to see all the big projects that lay ahead of us and find out what's inside the farmhouse, the hunter's lodge, the horse stables, and the dove house. See you soon.